1988 comes along and you think to yourself, I'm heading back to England, Stanley House stables, Sheikh Mohammed provides you with plenty of horses. I, I was under the impression you were a private trainer for Sheikh Mohammed, but you were putting me right on that. You, you were never no, actually he, private. He had a pretty big operation, obviously. He had 38 other trainers at the time, with England, Ireland, France, and wherever else. So to that extent, it was quite a broad spread. And I was, it was very clear from the beginning I could train for whoever I wanted to, so I always <laughs> had uh, people, uh, what you might call other, you know, as I know, in the yard, and it, and it worked fine. And we had a lot of success. We knocked up a quick thousand winners in the, in the 90s and over 100 group winners. Shantou won the ledger. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there were some really, really solid horses, group horses through there. And then, of course, you had the development of Godolphin. And then with that development, obviously having a, an operation like that became slightly less relevant, which is when I decided, always keep ahead of the posse, <laughs> you know, move on. Went down to Manton, had a good six years there and uh, enjoyed that, lovely place to train. But at the end of the day, back here because you want your own place. Yeah. I mean, probably America was a great place to train and, 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 and financially made a lot more sense than Europe. The business model of owning or renting a racing stables in, in England, I can tell you, or Ireland, is, is not a good business model. Certainly training in America is. But, you know, we had young children, wanted to come back, and, it, 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 and uh, we got a very nice uh, stables to come and train at and, and good people to work with. So it's, it's, it's all been great that way. But I probably my greatest fear is, is the sheer costs of this business now concern, con, concern to the prize money rewards levels. It's getting a little, little tight in there right now for people, and we might be seeing the frothy top of the market, and uh, it could be a bit of reality around the corner. Well, I don't think you need to worry about that on the way you're going at the moment. But, but just mentioning some of your, your good horses, obviously I said Shanty won the ledger, Benny the Dip, mm. great day come Derby Day, brilliant ride from Willie Rahn, yeah. Silver Patriot, Pat thrusting on the outside, yeah. great horse race. Yeah, it was a fabulous race. It was interesting from the point of view that, that uh, we were sort of <coughs> going to have, Frank is going to ride, and then he, he went and rode the Godolphin horse. And so we were slightly looking for jockey, and Willie came along, and uh, I said, you better hop up on this horse. And he took him for a county, so I didn't get a good feel of him at all <laughs> up Warren Hill. I said, <clears throat> don't worry. And then he said, well, will he stay? I said, look, he's won the Dante well. You've got to ride him like he stays. I said, just treat it like a mile and a half maiden at, at Doncaster, and he stays well. And he rode the most superb race. You've had many good days. Raya Fam, one of your favourites, uh, came, well, started his career off in Ireland. You sent it off to America and won, what, the Yellow Ribbon? Yeah, she won a lot. Of, she won good, good group ones for us there. She went and ran three off the trot. Uh, last one, I switched her to Bobby. We switched her to Bobby for the matriarch, but she'd gone and won the uh, Yellow Rimmers and the QE2. She was pretty phenomenal filly, not very big filly, but she had a heart, a huge heart, and she won, obviously, grade ones here and grade twos. And Marcel Boussat was a great one as a run as a, as a two-year-old second in, in, in the group one in Ireland. But uh, fillies like that come along every so often, not very often. There's certainly a lot of pleasure when you're around them. I think people learn in life that if you're lucky enough to be associated with good horses at any stage of your career, appreciate them. Because mm. by definition, athletes of that nature are very rare. You've had pyramids like that, you know, there's very few at the top. But you've had your fair share. Perhaps yes. your two fastest, Wolfhound, who um, we saw, I think, uh, Haydock Park Sprint Cup, Mace Roberts rode that day. And also, of course, Oasis Dream, probably the fastest you've trained. Yeah, he was very quick, particularly, yeah, he was the, probably the fastest. I mean, certainly on the clock, if you worked him, he was, I'd never had a horse work faster since I was fast even in America over five. Very quick horse, loved fast ground. Wolfhound, Cat Rail, all of those, Keen Hunter, all those good sprinters. <laughs> even old Malho, who won the, uh, the Jubilee, the first running of the Golden Jubilee Stakes at Royal Ascot. Gallantly, Malhub tries to hold them off. Dane Hurst has got within a length. Three points to far side, can't go on. And a surprise in the Golden Jubilee. A winner for Kevin Darley and John Gosden. Malhub. A lot of fun, those horses. I'm trying to look for another sprinter. I've got my eye on a two-year-old, but we'll have to wait till he's three. <laughs> but they're a lot of fun having good sprinters.